Well, now that we have our front doors open, hopefully you can see that 32 square feet of growing space is actually pretty substantial. Guten yardening, everybody! Over the last couple of weeks, we've talked a lot about the greens, well, some of the greens that we have growing in our indoor grow tent setup. But what we haven't talked about is the grow tent itself and the fan and the lights that we have in here that are helping us to grow these absolutely luscious greens. And so today I want to talk you through some of what we have here. Now one of the things that we've found out, and if you've gardened indoors before, you probably already know this, but a season doesn't go by where there isn't some sort of change or upgrade in the lights, etc., and the equipment that you'd use in the grow tent. It's almost like a college textbook. There's always a new version. And so while we're going to provide some links in the description for what we're talking about today, in some cases it won't be for the exact model, but it'll be for something that's very much comparable. So if one of the aspects of our growing setup that you see today is interesting to you, again, just check the description below to find that product or something very similar. If you have a grow light that's your go-to, we'd love to hear about it. We're always looking for the best type of setup, again, to produce the best greens, the best vegetables indoors. Now, as we go through this today, if you like the content, don't forget to push that thumbs up button. Without further ado, let's take a look at our grow tent. This is our Vivo Sun grow tent. It's four feet by eight feet by almost seven feet tall. That means that we have about 32 square feet of potential growing space indoors. And one of the things that we like the most about this grow tent is all of the access points because when you're setting up something this size, or even if it's one smaller, it's not always easy to access from one angle or the other, especially when you're talking about four by eight. If we had to access from just one side, it would be very difficult to reach to the other. So just like with most grow tents, we have the ability to see what's going on inside through these little plastic windows. We also have various sizes and shapes of entrances, depending on what we need to bring in bring out and how easily we need to access whatever it is we're looking for. Well, now that we have our front doors open, hopefully you can see that 32 square feet of growing space is actually pretty substantial as long as you use it wisely and you try to maximize the growing potential there. We have a lot going on, actually a lot that we haven't even shared with you yet. So that part's kind of exciting. And this will always fluctuate based on what we're harvesting, what we're transplanting, what we're adding in here. And a lot of the vegetables that we're growing don't take an extreme amount of time. And so this space is always in flux. But with a grow tent like this, one of the nice things is we have easy access here at the front. We also have two openings at the back, which we use and which you saw at the beginning of this video. So all around, in this grow tent, we have access points to make every single vegetable, every single thing that we're growing in here, easily accessible. Now, one of the most important setup pieces here in the grow tent is our fan. And ours is down at the bottom of our grow tent because we have an active intake system, which means that our vent is here and our fan itself, along with the carbon filter, is on the outside of our grow tent. When we first started growing in this setup three years ago, we bought a Hydroplanet 8-inch inline fan. And this one runs at 740 CFM. That means cubic feet of air per minute. And this particular model is a three-speed adjustable fan. So when you turn it on, you can hear it start up. That's on high, and as you adjust it around, it turns down to medium and, of course, to low. And we actually always run this fan on low. And the reason we do that is because we actually only need about 140 cubic feet per minute. So we have a fan that is more than capable of taking care of the space and the air inside of our grow tank. This is our carbon filter at the end, and it takes out about 99.5% of the debris, or debris, depending on where you're from, that might go into the grow tank. Now, it also factors into how we calculate how many cubic feet per minute we need in terms of our air flow. The way you calculate it, it's actually pretty simple. You take a look at the space inside and we have eight feet by four feet by about seven feet tall. That brings us to 224 feet. 
and then we want to replace the air in there somewhere between two and three minutes, every two to three minutes. So we divide the total number of cubic feet by minutes. We get 112 cubic feet per minute. And then because there is this carbon filter, we add about 20% to that overall. So again, we only need about 140 cubic feet per minute. So this fan is going to more than do the job. When you buy these fans, you can buy them just by themselves. You can buy them just the fan itself, but then you're gonna to have to get this ductwork and you'll have to get the filter, etc. So one of the nice things about these fans is that they're often now sold in kits. And again, one of the cool things about this grow tent is there is the entrance here for a vent. And there's also an entrance on the other side up top. Again, depending on the type of setup you want to put into your grow tent. And this should show you the importance of having that fan. I had this closed up for maybe five minutes and the fan turned off just for sound and the temperature rose to 81 degrees. And typically when everything's running, when the fan's on, it stays in that 65 to 70 range. I've just turned the fan back on and you can see the temperature is already starting to drop. It's been about three minutes and the temperature is already down to 73. So again, this is what I'm talking about when I say that fan makes all the difference. Now hopefully you have a better picture in your mind of the overall setup of our grow tent and our fan, but of course we need to talk a little bit about the lights that help make it all possible. I should point out that I put a link in the description to some really interesting research that NASA has done about the various parts of light across the spectrum and how they impact plant growth. That might actually change the way you think about which lights work best for what you're trying to grow. I'll talk a little bit about that as we start into our lights. This is the Hydroplanet T5. It's two feet by two feet. It has an extra plug here, which is really handy. It's come in handy many times. It has eight fluorescent 6500K bulbs. So we have white light on this one. And it also has the ability to run four bulbs at a time. You can either do the inner four or the outer four, just like this, depending on what you're trying to grow and your lighting needs. It also comes with these great hooks and attachments, these pulleys, that you can use to attach it to the top of your grow tent. And you'll see today that every single one of our lights are plug and play. They're not directly wired. We don't have anything that's directly wired. That'd be a little bit too difficult, especially since we want to be able to move these around. And this makes it, you know, if we just want to move the light left or right, we can move these posts left or right. Now one of the questions that often comes up is whether or not it's a good idea to buy white light or should I invest in one of those red and blue lights? What should I do? Well, the white light itself combines every single color of the spectrum. So you're actually getting a little bit of everything in a light like this, but you won't find that really concentrated red or blue. But that being said, it's perfect, absolutely perfect for your leafy greens and frankly, it makes a really good grow light in general anyway. We haven't had any difficulty with any of the greens that we're growing under this light. And one thing I can say for sure about this light is it doesn't get all that hot, so you can bring it right down on top of your vegetables as they're starting out as seedlings, and as that growth is beginning, you can start to raise it up as needed, as it gets taller. Again, this setup is really nice with these pulleys, all I have to do is take my hand and pull up a little bit and there it goes. I think that's an ideal setup right there. We can keep this as high or as low as we need it. This is a Morsen 2000 watt full spectrum grow light and you should be able to see that there are 200 different lights on here. And one of the really cool things about this light is it's supposed to be balanced to most directly reflect or act as real sunlight, which means it has red, blue, white, and infrared lights in here. And it's again, supposed to be the perfect balance. Now I'm gonna turn this on. It has two switches, depending on the level of brightness. Get those nice colors in here. And there it is all the way up. The plants themselves, the vegetables turn a different color, but this is definitely some lighting they enjoy. And let's take a look under here. Most of the lights in here are red and you probably can't tell very well because they're so bright that the camera's having to really adapt 
to that brightness. But the red is what plants need the most of. There are far fewer blue. If you have too much blue, it can actually stunt growth. The red itself is really gonna help with the seedlings. And then we have the white and the infrared. So again, we're getting that full mixture of lights, which if you read that research from NASA, will show you are most beneficial to the plants. To prevent these lights from heating up too much, we have four cooling fans on top. So you can hear them running right now. And they do a great job. So again, we're not adding too much heat in here. And just like before with this light, we have the ability, again, to raise and lower. These pulleys are an absolute necessity. And this light is about eight and a half inches by two feet. Part of the consideration when buying these lights is what size you need, depending on what it is you're trying to grow. Of course, the light will spread out a bit as it's turned on. But if you're talking about direct light, this is eight and a half inches by two feet long. Now the smallest light we have, which is about eight inches by a foot, is a light time tunnel, 300 watt grow light with 190 lights underneath. And these are pink and blue. Pink is in that red range. And so if I turn this on, you'll hear the fan running. This one I think is one of the loudest ones. You can see it's almost like a purplish color when they're combined. And again, here we go, we can see the light coming in. You can see the blue ones sort of stand out. You definitely want more red than blue. You don't want to stunt any growth. And this light has been particularly useful for germination, uh, stem development, and the blue lights that are in there also help with leaf thickness. So we can use this, again, just like every other setup. We can attach it, lower it, raise it, depending on what we need, but it's a little bit smaller. So maybe if you're growing in a smaller area, something like this is perfect for you. It's a little under a square foot, but it is a powerful light. Right now we've got it over top of our tangerine and you can see that light has spread out quite a bit. Now in addition to the grow lights that we've purchased we've also built a couple of our own for about $20, $25 using some heating ductwork that we separated out, some 8 inch ductwork, uh, a few chains to hold it up and then some of these multi-socket lights that you can get anywhere for just a couple of dollars and then we added our own 6500k bulbs and they've done quite well. Some nice reflection in there you can probably see these give a really nice white light in a really inexpensive way. There are a ton of decisions that are going to go into what makes the perfect growing setup for you in terms of indoor growing. The size of the grow tent varies based on the size that you have. Your ability to position it so that you have easy access all around is very important. Making sure that you have the perfect fan in terms of the size of the space you have. Then it comes down to which lights work best for your needs. Our variety of lights gives us the opportunity to experiment with the different vegetables we're growing, this wide variety, and determine which light works best for what. And it always helps to have some research like the link I shared from the NASA study on lights to know which ones of these vegetables would be best for the lights that we have. If you have any questions at all about our grow tent, our lights, our fan setup, anything like that, please leave us a comment below and we'll get back with you very quickly. We hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.